All right, hello everyone, and welcome to a new Let's Play for the channel, Cuphead, a game that came out on the Switch, I think, last year. But I really don't want to waste any time, and plus this may hurt my voice, so let's get right into it with a new game, shall we? Once upon a time, in a magical place called Inkwell Isle, there were two brothers named Cuphead and Mugman. They lived without a care under the watchful eye of the wise Elder Kettle. One day, the two boys wandered far from home, and despite the Elder Kettle's many warnings, ended up on the wrong side of the tracks and into the Devil's Casino. Inside, Cupman and Mug Cuphead and Mugman soon found themselves on a winning streak on the at the craps table. Hot dog! exclaimed King Dice the Casino's sleazy manager. These fellas can't lose. <laughs> nice run, boys, laughed the newcomer. The boy, the brothers gasped. It was the casino's owner, the devil himself. Now, how about we raise the stakes? He suggested with a tippy grin. With one more roll and all the loot in my casino is yours. The devil boomed. But if you lose, I'll have your soul. Deal? Cuphead, blinded by easy riches, nodded and grabbed the dice for a throw. Gosh, Cuphead, no! cried Mugman, for he understood the danger, but it was too late. Snake Eyes laughed the devil while slamming the floor. You lose! The brothers trembled in fear and they loomed over now. Over them. Now about those souls. The brothers pleaded for their very lives. There must be another way to repay you, Mugman stammered. Yes, please, mister, Cuphead added. Hmm, perhaps there is. The devil snickered, pulling out a parchment. I have here a list of my runaway debtors. Collect their souls for me, and I might pardon you two bugs. Now get going! The devil roared, kicking the boys out most rudely. You have until midnight tomorrow to collect every one of those souls. Otherwise, I'll be the one collecting yours. Cuphead and Mugman were terribly frightened and ran away as fast as they could. Come on, Mugman! Or Mug! Panted Cuphead. We have to find the other kettle. He'll know what to do. What a fine pickle you boys have gotten yourselves into. I know you don't want to be pawned to the devil, but if you refuse, I can't bear to imagine your face. You must play along for now, collect those contracts, and you'd best be ready for some nasty business. Your dead of friends won't be very friendly once you confront them. In fact, I expect they'll transform into terrible beasts. Take this potion so they won't hang you out the dry. It will give you the most remarkable magical abilities. Now go to my writing desk and use the mystical inkwell there. You need to prepare yourselves for a scrap. Alright, so you check out this letterhead and you go into the tutorial. But there is a little bit of something that I do have to explain first. So one thing that's nice about Cuphead is you can very much customize your options in terms of your controls. So if we go to control options and then controls, you see that my, if you already played this game, then you know that my control scheme is quite different. So we're going to go back and restore the defaults just so I can show you all what the basic controls are. Now then, let's go over this level real quickly. You hold down on your joystick to duck, you press B to jump, you hold it to jump even higher, you press X in the air to dash. You jump up, you press A in the air to dash. You go down to descend, Y to shoot, or to stay in place and then aim in any eight directions. If I can hit this thing, please. If I can hit this thing, please. Thank you. And when you see something peak, press, press B on it and you'll parry it. You can also do the same thing if you're playing two player to revive your friends. Press A to use an AX move. It requires one of those little cards that's right next to Cuphead's health. And press it. It's a super strong attack. And you can also collect coins to purchase stuff in the shops. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to re-customize the controls to how I want them. See you guys in a moment. Okay, hello everyone, now we're back. So, I re-customize my controls to what I want them to be. So, as you can see on the top left, my dash is actually ZL instead. I prefer to have it on the trigger button. Shoot for me is ZR, and I know what you're thinking. Oh wait, how can you use R and ZR at the same time? Well, for one thing, that's technically possible, 
But instead, I don't like doing that. Personally, if you are holding a direction of the Joy-Con, Cuphead can still shoot in a different direction. So move alongside with it, but I personally find that the better way to control the game. Otherwise, those pairs are all the same, but instead of whatever this EX move was, I changed it to X. It's a bit easier on me. Anyway, let's get on out of here, shall we? Okay, let's actually get started with the game. Well, I say that, and we're actually gonna talk to this Apple kid right here. Hey, fellas! Looks like you're on board now, eh? Well, I used to be the same way, always getting into trouble. Running, jumping, shooting. But now I prefer just strolling around and going to the pictures. But hey, let me give you a tan. Take this. You see three gold coins. Alright, so, as you can see in the top corner, we have four coins, so I think we should head over to Pork Rind Emporium, because this is the main shop for the game. So in the back row, you'll have your different kinds of shots, and in the front row, you'll have special bonus equipment, I guess you could call them. But one thing, I don't care who you are, you're always going to get the smoke bomb, because it's completely overpowered compared to the rest of the stuff. So, what the smoke bomb does, it makes you invincible during your dash animation. It basically makes you puff in like a... Smoke and all that. You got to equip those new purchases if you want them. Um, look at your quick card, you bums. Man, that was like Mega Man level bad of voice acting. Anyway, under charms, you have Smoke Bomb. And you can also equip the Super, which we'll get into later. And you can also have two shots, which we'll also get into later when we have more money. Speaking of more money, let's head into the first run and gun section, Forest Follies. So, for run and gun sections, the main point of these levels are to get you more money, so that way you can buy more stuff. But as the name states, you're going to be doing two things, running and gunning. You're trying to get to the end of the level while also not dying. So you're going to want to shoot down everything that's coming at you, because basically anything that moves can hurt you, and will hurt you if it has the opportunity to. And in each run and gun section, there are five coins for you to obtain. Uh, they're really not, they're rarely, if ever, actually no, there's like a few cases, they're rarely hidden. So you do want to keep an eye out them for sometimes, but you usually don't have to really stress out about them too much. Really, honestly, the main challenge is, you know, getting to the end of the level without dying, because, you know, you only have three hits, so you want to make them count. Kitties! Ah, these blueberries are the absolute worst, I must say. There we go. Oh, and another thing to mention, it's completely possible to beat these without ever killing someone. If you do that, you're able to get the pacifist rank. And if I recall correctly, if you get the pacifist rank on every run and gun section, you could play the game in black and white if that's really what you want to do. But of course, there is the inherent diff that works too. There is the inherent difficulty of not being able to see what's pink to know how to parry. But of course, if you played this game enough, you clearly would already know how what's parryable or not. I want to shoot this blueberry, but it's staying off screen for me. What? Wait. The blueberry despawned for some reason. Oh, no it didn't. Oh, okay, I did not see that coming. One complaint I will say I have with this game is, there is sometimes things that are literally being blocked by the background, which I don't think is a, as fair, but we will live with it. Okay, I guess we won't live with it. We quite literally will not live with it. Ah, uh, another thing to mention, as this is known as being kind of like the 2D Dark Souls game, you probably will be expecting me die to die a lot, and I will tell you how that will work. If I die more than three times, I will skip ahead to whatever my successful run of something is, whether that's a boss or a run and gun section. So now that we got that all along the way, it's time for a swell run. Hopefully!
Okay, sorry for being quiet occasionally. I just like to focus a bit more sometimes. Hope y'all don't mind. It, there we go. And I believe after this, we're at the end. There we go. Bravo! We have finished the first run and gun section of the game and taking no hits. So, at the end of each level, whether it's a boss fight or a run and gun section, you will be graded, but on some slightly different things. In the run and gun section, you are graded on your time, you're graded on your HP, how many times you parry things, and how many gold coins you got. If I went out of my way to parry two more things, I could have gotten in. A plus plus plus. And uh, in terms of time, even though it doesn't say what the time to beat is, if your time is in gold, that means you got the best possible rank on it. And with a celebratory cut man, we beat the first run and gun section. So I believe we should head back at the pork rinds because we got some more money, so it's time to get our first shot. Or I guess our second shot. I like to go with spread. And there we go. Now, after you beat some levels in the game, actually, no, after you beat all levels in the game, you unlock a new path to move forward. They're not always the required path, but still. So, we're gonna get our spread shot and equip that. And I want to check something. Yep, here we go. We're gonna go and take on this mausoleum next. So, in these mausoleums, you have to deal with the Specter Gang. It's basically a gang of ghosts. So, for these kind of missions, you have to protect, if it will load, if it will load, you have to protect this urn from ghosts. And just to note, this thing can only take one hit. So, after it gets touched, it's game over for you. What you want to do is constantly be pairing these ghosts and make sure they never touch the urn. But, if you do complete this level, you will be surprised. Oh, don't worry, these things will get much harder. As you can see now, the ghosts are going to start diversifying. There are more mausoleums later in the game, so don't worry, they will diversify even more, and they will be annoying. Kind of annoying. They're not terrible, though. Gosh, I don't know how to thank you boys for saving me. Where are my manners? I didn't even introduce myself. I am known as the Legendary Chalice. Pleased to meet you. I was searching for magic and got trapped by those ghosts. Speaking of magic, please accept this gift. It should help. There are other mausoleums around Inkwon Isle. I just wonder... Me. You mustn't forget that magical super arts have to be equipped in the menu before use. That's right, like I said before, you're able to equip supers. There are three in the game. This first one is a large horizontal beam that will encompass about half, a third to half of the screen for you. Ooh, excuse me, sorry. And after that, and you do that, and it will do a lot of damage to whatever opponent's being hit by it. So anyway. I believe it's now time to get into the main bread and butter of the game, the boss fights. So let's get started. First, we first let me go over my loadout. I'm gonna have pea shooter, spread, super R1, and smoke bomb. So let's go and fit and face the root pack in botanic panic. And as you can see at the beginning, you can pick between simple and regular difficulty. I'll explain with each boss what their simple difficulty entails for the most part. Anyway. For first off, we have Sal Sputter. He's going to be shooting three balls of mud at you and a worm on the fork. It's always like that. But they will get progressively faster, so you do want to keep an eye out for that. This last one is the fastest, so you could get hit if you're not care- How did I get hit? Ah, whatever. Okay, now then. For this next- If you're in simple mode, this phase right here is going to be skipped over. This is Ollie Bold. What he's going to do is, after you start shooting him, he's going to start crying, and the tears do hurt. So you're going to want to just try to shoot him while avoiding the tears at the same time. 
All right, time for the last phase. We have Chauncey Chattany. And in case you're wondering, uh, Chattany's are a kind of carrot. I know the other ones were a bit more on the nose. This one's a bit more eclectic. But he's going to be launching those carrots at you. And in between, when he opens up his mind's eye, I guess, he's going to be launching three uh, psychokinetic beams at you. And now then, like I said, if you are playing simple difficulty, Ollie Bulb will be skipped and you'll skip right from South Sputter all the way to Chauncey. But if you were, after the Nintendo Switch version came out, there were secret stages of boss fights that were also added. There are three in total. The first one is actually here. If you don't attack Ollie Bulb at all, he'll be happy that you aren't mean, I guess, and will disappear. But in return, another enemy will come out called Radish. And what Radish would do is he'll join Chauncey, and we'd be constantly spinning around, basically being incredibly annoying. I'll make sure to show that off later, though. But let's see what we get for a score. Honestly, I don't really care too much about the score. As long as they get a B, I'm pretty much satisfied. You know what they say, C's get degrees, and I want to get that degree. But alright, ladies and gentlemen, in this episode, we began the game, we did the tutorial, we did our first running gun section, we did our first mausoleum, and we did our first boss fight. And in the next episode, we're going to be doing the second running gun section, and we're also going to be doing even more boss fights, who could have guessed? It's absolutely stupendous. I will see you all then. Well, Cuphead and his pal bug man, they like to roll the dice. By chance they came on Devil's Game.